a 10 year old child comes to you with extra articulation of 1 1 the condition is called as so what do you mean by extra articulation is basically the tooth has basic come out of its socket or rather a particular joint has popped out of its uh, rather the two surfaces of the joint like we know a joint is made up of two bones so one of the bones has popped out of the joint and that is what is called as extra articulation that means it is outside its articulation so the tooth like we know articulates to the alveolar bone with the help of the periodontal ligament so this tooth basically has come out of its joint that means it has come out of the alveolar bone and what is this condition called as is what they have asked you so 1 1 is your maxillary left sorry maxillary right central incisor so we know for a fact that when the tooth has come out completely from its socket it is what is called as avulsion okay so that is the answer to the question over here when it comes to inclusion what is inclusion is basically the tooth is within its socket so this is my socket and this is my tooth it gets pushed in so as a result of this getting pushed in if this is my bone the tooth basically either it goes and impinges on the bone or it displaces within the bone and may cause fracture of the bone itself so because the tooth has literally gone into the socket and it is in direct contact with bone when i vertically or laterally percuss this tooth i am going to get a dull metallic sound which is similar to that of ankylosis what is fracture with enamel that you are seeing over here fracture with enamel basically means that the enamel of the tooth structure has either fractured or they have craze lines which are present so when you have craze lines which are present on the surface of the enamel if this is my enamel this is my dentine if you have craze lines that are present on the enamel this is what is called as enamel infractions okay sometimes what might happen is your dentine may be present within but and the enamel a part of the enamel may be chipped off because like we know the incisal edge of the tooth is made up of two layers of enamel and the dentin ends here. So, this area is what is where you have your double layer of enamel. There are instances when this part of the enamel may chip off and that is what is called as again an enamel infraction. So, your LEs class 1 is nothing but your enamel infractions or fractures involving only the enamel. Lastly, when it comes to what is a dilaceration, a dilaceration is a sharp bend in the root, length of the root. So, if my root of the tooth is somewhat like this, in a dilacerated tooth, it would have a sharp bend. Okay. This is very commonly seen with the distal roots of the mandibular molars and the palatal roots or your mesiobuccal roots of your maxillary molars. It is also very commonly found in the uh, maxillary lateral incisors where they are said to have a distopalatal curvature and more often than not the curvature can be very sharp. So, when you perform an endodontic treatment reaching the area of the curvature can be difficult because of your filing. Okay, that is why you should be careful with your dilacerations. Also, another important problem that can occur with dilacerations is that when you are extracting it from the socket it can be difficult to remove the root tip and there may be fracture that may occur. So, if I have a tooth which is come with extra articulation or avulsion, like, I, like you can see over here, the tooth comes out because the periodontal lig uh, ligament fibers have been stretched to the point that they are going to tear. So, the tooth comes out. When I take an x-ray of such a tooth, what is going to happen is, if you can see over here that the alveolar socket is going to be present as it is, you will see a very distinct lining of the lamina dura. It is something very similar to what happens after you extract the tooth. Uh, it, the radiographic image is very similar to that of an extraction socket. Okay. A very important point that I would like to uh, make over here is according to the latest 2020 guidelines of by IADT, that is International Association of Dental Traumatology, you do not anymore use 1.23% uh, sodium fluoride as a as an agent as a root conditioning agent to prevent ankylosis or to delay the process of ankylosis so that as well as doxycycline both have been stopped from your previous guidelines because they have shown that it is pointless to use them okay so if there is a question that has been asked remember that you do not use these agents anymore